Hello and welcome to a brand new Road Trip Special 30 Minute Time Limit. My name is Mac Davis and I'm your host for a special that will include the movers and shakers of professional wrestling and sports entertainment. Our very first guest happens to be a host of the wildly popular Busted Open radio show on Sirius XM. His name, Dave LaGreca. Let's talk about uh, where you're from. Mm -hmm. I know you're born and raised in New Jersey, right? That's right, New Jersey. Thank you. Yeah. Earlier you were saying Jersey. I'm glad you're saying New Jersey because only people from New Jersey can say Jersey. So I'm glad you're using the respect for the state. <laughs> Like you are. Uh, yeah, I was born and raised in New Jersey, and uh, yeah, I still live in New Jersey. Now, as a kid, did your father take you to wrestling matches? Or He did. And if you remember back in the day, like, they would have the big shows in the arena, but mm -hmm. they would have, like, the smaller, like, even the WWF, they would have little house shows around in, like, smaller, like, community colleges yep. and uh, ice rinks and things like that. So I would go to William Patterson College, which fit maybe, you know, four or 500 people. And then I would go to the big shows at the Meadowlands, which opened around 1981, which held 20,000 people. So, you know, if you were going to a WWF show, you saw Hogan at the Meadowlands, and then you would see, you know, Billy Jack Haynes yep. and things, you know, uh, in the smaller places. So I used to, my dad used to take me to all the wrestling shows, not just the WWF, but at the time there was an organization called Pro Wrestling USA, mm -hmm. which was a combination of the NWA and AWA. So being in Jersey, I was able to, you know, see Hogan defend the WWF title, but see Flair defend the NWA championship and see Rick Martel defend the AWA championship. Let me ask you, I've always been curious, because you're from up north and I'm from the south, so mm -hmm. obviously I grew up with WCW, NWA, Mid-Atlantic, all those type of things. What did you watch when you grew up? Was Did you get to see that kind of shows prior to the Superstation coming along? Well, I'll tell you my story. I was uh, by my buddy's house. I want to say it was around 1982. I was at my buddy's house. And I was 11 years old, and I was, and uh, he was watching wrestling, and I had never watched wrestling before. So he go, he asked me if I was a wrestling fan. I said, No, I never watched it. Is that like with uh, Bob Backlund? And he goes, No, that's the WWF. That's fake. Yep. You 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 need to watch the NWA. And he goes, That's real. So I sat down. I watched an episode of Georgia Championship Wrestling. I always say like the first thing I ever saw was uh, Gordon Soley interviewing Tommy Rich, and then they go to break. And then coming back, it was Gordon Soley interviewing Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer. And I was like captivated by it. So for a good six month period, I just watched Georgia Championship Wrestling on Saturdays on TBS. And then I discovered the wrestling magazines, the, the after mags, Pro Wrestling yeah. Illustrated, the wrestler inside wrestling. And that's when I kind of found out that there's, there was this whole world outside of just that one hour show that I was watching on WTBS. And it was really uh, Superfly Snuka against Bob Backlund. In Pro Wrestling Illustrated, they had a picture of Snuka on top of the yep. cage and Bob Backlund. And I was like, wait a second. This, this looks real to me. So then that's when I started watching WWF. Yeah, it's funny because down south, we always thought the same thing that you were told. We were always told that the, the wrestling up north is comic book stuff. It's not that good. Don't watch it. Don't waste your time. Even though they had Bruno San Martino, you know, way back at that time. And, yeah. and I'm thinking, well, yeah, there's some big names at that point. But we never saw the WWF at that point as a real organization. We thought they were just kind of junky. Where we thought the NWA and WCW, you know, they ruled everything. And uh, so it's, it's kind of cool to hear that somebody from up north kind of had the same experience through somebody yeah, else. Yeah, I felt, I felt exactly the same way. And then once I started discovering everything, I kind of liked it for what it was. Like, yeah. I, I still looked at NWA, even to today. Like, if you listen to Bust It Open, I talk so highly about the NWA. There's just something about those three letters that just scream pro wrestling to me. But I was always a big NWA fan. And for a while, I didn't even watch WWF. It was NWA, it was AWA, and then because of cable TV, you were able to watch everything. So, did um, when you went to school, and I know this is common with a lot of folks who like wrestling, were you made fun of for being a wrestling fan? I sure was. I sure was. Uh, yeah, you, you, you took a beating when you're a wrestling fan until 
WrestleMania 3. When 1987 came along and WrestleMania 3, is WrestleMania 3 hit and it was yep. mainstream, then everybody wanted to be my friend. Everybody wanted to ask me about pro wrestling. <laughs> but, you know, I would bring in the wrestling magazines and I would. I would be, I would be made fun of. And there was always my kind of clique of friends that, you know, appreciated it. But the majority of people didn't get it until 1987. Well, what about now? It, being an adult and being a wrestling fan, I know because you host a radio show, maybe they look at you a little bit differently. But just as a fan, as an adult, do you find that other people still look at you kind of sideways? Always. Oh, wait, here at Sirius XM, like now they're finally acknowledging the show. Why? Because it's making money. It's a hit, you know. But yep. it was a struggle just to get this show on the air. And then... For years, and I did the show with Doug Mortman, mm -hmm. uh, for years we did the show and it kind of just flew under the radar because nobody really accepted it because it was pro wrestling. But now you're starting to feel that it's becoming a mainstream thing again. So now you're kind of getting the acknowledgement, but I still get it. And, you, and I'm sure oh, you yeah. do too. Oh, I do. You still get the, you know, the tilt and, you know, what, what wrestling? I thought you were a sports guy because I worked with the NFL. Yep. So I always get that. I always get, what? I thought you were a sports guy. I didn't know you were a wrestling guy. Try, so try telling somebody you're a wrestler. As an adult. I can imagine. And that is, uh, I, I get a lot of people who look at me like, oh, so you're one of those types. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but, I, but, <laughs> but still, when you, if you say, yeah, I'm a professional wrestler, they're like, oh, you're a professional. But when you say you cover pro wrestling, that's kind of like, you yep. know, they kind of look at you a little You're one tilt. of the nerdy guys that yeah. goes around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Put, my, put my glasses on. Oh, yeah, I got mine over here. So. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, but definitely. You had mentioned uh, brothers and sisters to me at one time. I know you got a brother who mm -hmm. works. Does he work for Sirius XM? No, he, uh, he's, um, he does afternoon drive on ESPN in New York. Does he listen to your show? He does not listen to my That's show. That's a shame. It's a damn shame. And it's something I give him a lot of heat for because I listen to his show and he doesn't listen to my show. And it's, it's always the same excuse. I'm not a wrestling guy. I don't get what you're talking about. But you think just out of brotherly love. Oh, yeah. So he and never, as you grew up, he never enjoyed wrestling no, with you? No, no, no. And listen, we're very, very close. I don't want you to get the wrong, wrong idea, but... Um, July 15th, 1984. Well, you remember that date well. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the date well for a couple of different reasons. One, it's my birthday. July 15th is my birthday. And the day before was July 14th, 1984. And I don't know if that date hits you in any way, but that was Black Saturday. Ooh. That was when the WWF took over TBS. Yep. And instead of seeing Gordon Soley, you saw Freddie Miller introducing Vince McMahon. Another reason I hate the WWF, <laughs> by the way. Uh, <laughs> um, but July 15th was my birthday, and my parents took us to the Meadowlands to see wrestling. And my brother, big sports fan, that was also the day of the USFL championship game. So, like, he was, like, had to go kicking and screaming. And to this day, he talks about how he missed that USFL championship game, which turned out to be the last USFL championship game. So he missed that because of going to wrestling for my birthday. I know that he had made a comment. He had had a show, and I saw a video somewhere where he talked about your wedding and that your mom was there, and your mom was all beside herself because she was at a wrestling event or something like that. And that eventually, I guess your mom found herself enjoying uh, the wedding. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me what made you want to get in there? First of all, I know in radio, it's hard enough to keep a marriage well. And this is my third marriage. There you go. Way. So, yes. so in radio, it's tough. Wrestling, it's tough. So you're, you're double whammy right there. You got wrestling and you got radio in your background. But now you're married to a, a beautiful woman, nice lady. Violetta, uh, yeah. Violetta. Uh, and I know that uh, you got married in a wrestling ring. How did you talk her into doing that? All right. It's not even that we just got married in a wrestling ring. We actually had a wrestling match <laughs> in between uh, dinner and dessert at the wedding. Well, that's okay. I can see that. Being yes, fun. it was. It was actually fun. So I'll tell. I'll tell you exactly why. Obviously, pro wrestling has become my life. Like it is yours. Yes. You know, it kind of dominates everything you do. Um, Violetta had an image of what she wanted the ceremony to look like and what she wanted the reception to look like from the lights and the decorations and everything. And my buddy Kevin Knight own has a wrestling school called the IWF Wrestling School in uh, West Patterson. So when she was looking at pictures and she was kind of coming up for the scheme of the wrestling, she goes, hey, do you think Kevin would let us rent out his wrestling school for the day because the size is perfect and everything else? So I said, I asked him, he said, sure, you can rent it out, which we did. And he said, hey, by the way, the wrestling ring is there. If you want, why don't we use the wrestling ring as the altar when you get married? 
And we said, sure, why not? And then it's like, hey, well, by the way, if, if you're going to be using the ring, why not have a wrestling match at the re during the reception? And so that's exactly what we did. And she was okay with it. She was definitely okay with it. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it, it's a great story to tell, and it, makes, it made it so unique. So, yeah. Violetta, we were just talking about, you talk about her quite a bit on the radio. Mm -hmm. My experience in the radio, because I was on the radio, as you know, many times in my previous marriage, uh, I would talk about my wife all the time. It's just a habit. You know, if you're really, to me, if you're a good broadcaster, good radio person, you're going to come in and you're going to talk about life. You're going to talk about what happened to you, what happened at the house, because that's what you're there for. Some women like that, some don't. Obviously, Violetta has no problem. Well, it's funny because she is a very, very private person. She's, you know, she has her small group of friends. She's, she's very private in that way. So it's not, she's definitely not somebody that's craving attention or wanting attention. But you're right. When you do a wrestling show, especially, or any kind of radio show, five days a week for three hours, you're going to incorporate your real life. You have to. Yes. And our fans, the Busted Open Nation, um, is almost like family to me. They're friends. You know, they're somebody that I talk to now for over 10 years. So, of course, your real life is going to bleed in. And also for me, myself, I'm not one of those people that has an ego about them. Like, I'm not going to just come on here to make myself look good or it's not a power trip. It's not an ego trip. So I'll make fun of myself. So if oh, yeah. something bad happens, I'll talk about it on the air. Like, believe me, Violetta always comes out looking like the hero. And oh, yeah. I'm always the one that's looking like the scrub. So <laughs> uh, I have no problem doing that. And, 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 and she has fun with it on social media. She buys into the tweets and everything at, the, at our live remotes. As you know, I got our 10-year anniversary party. She's a part. She, you know, the whole pierogi thing. She oh, made yeah. pierogies. So, like, she, she, she's in it. You know, she's, she, she, she knows that this is a, bar, a huge part of my life. And because she is my life right now, she's in it. Whether she likes it or not. <laughs> yeah. So she's stuck now. Yeah, that's it. Man. That's it. You also worked with the NHL. I worked for the National Hockey League. Yep, absolutely. I did that before I came to work for Sirius XM. And once you came here, that was NFL at that point? I worked 13 years for the NFL. And what were you doing at that point? I was the morning show producer. Oh, so you were actually on the other end of what you're doing now. Yep, I was at the other end. And I going to all the Super Bowls, I went to... A, Pretty much every Super Bowl from 2004 to 2014. What made you get into your own show versus staying with the NFL? Well, because wrestling's always been a passion of mine. And Doug Mortman, who I did the show with originally, we said, hey, you know, Sirius, and at the time it was before the merger, Sirius is perfect platform for wrestling. It's completely geared towards that audience yeah. it's you know it's it's a niche audience it's a hardcore audience this would be perfect and uh we pitched it and it took a long time but finally they accepted it and it was just kind of like a side gig it was never meant to be full time full time and it started off a day then two days and three days and then finally because of the popularity of the show they moved it over to five days and then nfl took a back seat and then no seat at all and now it's just all about busted open You've got some great co-hosts on Busted Open. Yep. Uh, very, very lucky. You've got Bully Ray. Mm -hmm. Tell me about Bully Ray. Was he the first guest host you had come in? Yeah, Bully would be the first. Uh, Bully and I uh, had, he was always a guest on our show, always appreciated the show, always respected Doug and I and our views because we were never like, we would never dig up dirt and we would never just be completely negative. So he kind of it respected that and liked it, and he was a frequent guest on the show, and we started co conversing. It was actually uh, the Okada Omega match from Wrestle, oh, yeah. Wrestle Kingdom. Uh, I came on the air, and I said that I thought it was the best match since Flair Steamboat in 1989, and Bully didn't agree, <laughs> and we had actually had a conversation off air. This wasn't even on air. This is over the phone, and... And I knew Doug was leaving the show because Doug is a VP here at Sirius XM. So I knew that he wasn't going to be a part of the show any longer. And we needed to get another host. And that's when I said, hey, is radio something you'd like to do? And based off of that conversation, it clicked, it worked. And yeah, he was kind of like the guy who broke the ice. It's good. I like his talent on the air against yours, mainly because he's the 
the Hellraiser, he tries to stir stuff up and you try to calm it down. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and we have good chemistry, I think, on you the do. air. And uh, we kind of know now our cadence. And I think it, it flows really well. And yeah, you know, he is the bully. And at first I didn't, you know, step up to the bully. Now I have no problem doing it, but he has no problem knocking me down either. So oh, I think yeah. it's He's a good still dynamic. Be bully. Yeah, he is. Yeah. <laughs> How about Tommy Dreamer? When did he come along? Well, Tommy is somebody who is also a frequent guest. And, uh, you know, Tommy was interested in radio and not so much with Busted Open. He wanted to get into radio, fantasy football. He's somebody who's a big time sports fan. And he actually started dabbling into the fantasy sports channel here before even being really? a part of Busted Open. And he was so good. I, I needed to make him a, a part of the show. And,. Um, yeah, and now he's a, he has a, a permanent day once a week, and I'm, I couldn't be happier. Mark Henry. Now, Mark is somebody I've been talking to for a long time. Um, Mark was our first guest here on Busted Open uh, you know, 10 years ago, over the 10 years ago. Guest. Yeah, wow. for the first ever show. Uh, it was uh, Prince Nana and Mark Henry were our first two guests here on their first ever show on Busted Open. And... It was the WrestleMania in Dallas, so WrestleMania 31. No, no, that would be WrestleMania 32. I'm sorry. WrestleMania 32, him and I actually had the first serious conversation about him being a part, and it took a little bit, but now he is, and I'm glad he is. He's, he's a Hall of Famer for a reason. He's uh, probably one of the nicest men I know. I was about to say, he, he is one of the guys on your show that you listen to, and he sounds sincere, very nice. Always wanting to help make things better. Yep, and he does. What are some of your favorite memories from Busted Open? Do you have any? Cause I know when, like in wrestling, people ask me that all the time, and you try to pick out a match, and like that's just too difficult. Truth is, though, there are one or two I can pull out if I have to. Is there a memory from Busted Open that really sticks with you? There's two. There is our. We, we, you were at our ten year anniversary party, yeah. like. You know, that was really us kind of just like showing Sirius XM that, hey, you know what, look at, look at this. And I'll never forget, I was actually staying at a hotel that day, um, a couple of blocks away from where we we're going to have the show. So I, it, it's like maybe an hour and a half before airtime. I turned the corner to go on the street where, where the bar was, and I see a line. And I was like, what is this line for? Like, and I remember asking somebody, like, you know, what's going on here? I was like, I hope this isn't going to interfere with our show. Because, <laughs> like, you know, there's this line. And, and they were, it was the line to get in to our show. I actually remember that moment because you tweeted or did something at that point. I remember seeing it online when I was at the uh, convention hall. And I thought, oh, he's going to be in a great mood today. Yeah, and I was like, I couldn't believe it. It was like, wow. And... We had so many people. We had over 600 people at the show, and the owner of the bar um, was afraid that he was going to have to shut down the show because there yep. was so many. They had to turn people away because there's just too many people, and it was that. That was just a memory that will stick with me forever. That was just kind of like our validation. Was that probably the peak? Do you think? I don't want to say the peak, but up to that point, was that the peak of Busted Open? Yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. And, and there had been changes on the show and you never know if people are going to stick with you and are, you know, because we move times and move days so many times. And you really don't know because when you're doing your show, you're not doing it in front of an audience. Right. You know, when you're doing, when you're wrestling a match, you yeah. know the reaction because you can hear the crowd. Right. We don't know. So that was kind of the validation of like, hey, this is popular. People like this. And, and this is something that I know that is going to be around for a long time. That was definitely probably the biggest memory. Another memory that really sticks in my head is WrestleMania 29 because it was in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. But not only that... Um, they uh, WWE every year has um, like kind of like a radio row where it's the Friday morning before WrestleMania. They have a lot of the WWE superstars where media can interview. Right. So Busted Open was a part of Radio Row that year. And it was at the Meadowlands Arena, you know, the old Brendan Byrne Arena where my dad used to take me. So um, I'm doing it in the, in that, and I'm looking at and, the, you know, they, they've now closed that arena right. down which is heartbreaking, but that arena didn't really change all that much from when I went there as a kid. So I, I, I was looking around that arena. I can pinpoint, you know, where me and my dad sat, the matches we saw. And one of the guests that day was Sergeant Slaughter. And I saw him wrestle Ric Flair 
for the NWA Championship back in 1985. Wow. And, I, and, I, and, I, and in the interview, I mentioned the Sergeant Slaughter. I pointed to the exact section where my dad and I sat. And right where I said, you know, you know, we were sitting in that row and those seats. And he actually got teary-eyed talking about it with me. Wow. And it was like, just to be able to do that, like, I'm doing a wrestling show. I'm interviewing Sarge and Slaughter in an arena that my dad used to take me where I saw him wrestle against Ric Flair, who's my all-time favorite wrestler. Like, it can't get any better than that. So those two memories stick out more than any other. You know, and another memory that I think is something to point out is that the memory of you and your father going to the matches. That's one thing I think that people fail to see about wrestling. It is a big family yes. thing. I mean, there you talk to anybody, my dad, my grandfather, you know, whoever, we went to the shows together. That's what they did. So it, to me and to the wrestling fan, that is wrestling. It's, it's our family. The wrestlers are our family. The fans are our family. Yep. It's just how it is. Let me ask you, I'm curious, with everything that's going on now, you have the new uh, organizations that you got AEW, you got ROH, you got New Japan Pro Wrestling. With everything that's going on right now, what's right with wrestling? Well, I think the, the, the best thing about pro wrestling right now is that you're getting what you've always wanted. Like, there's options now. So I... I you know, I, I think with social media, it kind of breeds negativity a lot. It does. But, I mean, I, the, to me, this is the best time to be a pro wrestling fan. This is the closest, and maybe even some would believe better than the era that I grew up in with the territories. Because, you know, I couldn't go to Florida Championship Wrestling unless I went to Florida. I couldn't right. go to Georgia Championship Wrestling until, unless I went to Georgia. I couldn't go to World Class I went, until, I, went, until I, I go to Dallas. Like now here, AEW eventually will come to this area. You know, I was able to watch Ring of Honor in New Japan at the Garden. This last, uh, this is this past year is what you're yeah, talking about. Yeah, right? Incredible show. Incredible show. Uh, I don't know if you're a little hard of hearing or not, but you've got 20,000 people watching you right now. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I was pro I was already out of school. I, I graduated from college in '95, so by that time I was already <laughs> married and had a home. So you know, I, I, there, I found a way to watch both. Let me ask you a question, uh, and I'm curious on you know, your viewpoint. One of my fears with social media and the current Wednesday night war type of things that are taking place is that if we don't support people like AEW who are trying to go out there and do their shows, they may fade away. Yes. And if they fade away, what stops the WWE from going back to that same old boring comic book stuff that they were doing before? I think that's part of what the problem was is that they weren't getting pushed. And Vince will tell you in a heartbeat, He's better when he's got competition. But when he eats his competition up, he goes back to doing the same old safe stuff, which means that our wrestling with the edge will go away and back to that area because it's a business. They're running a business, and AEW's running a business as well, but they're trying to run their business with a little more edge than what WWE used to do. Is there, I mean, do you see a problem if we lose AEW? Do you see yes. WWE going back? Yes, I do. Yep. And that's why I get so frustrated from people yes. that say they don't watch AEW. Support AEW. Because we didn't get here in the States, you know, when, when All In sold out and had 10,000 people, mm -hmm. we hadn't seen that in 20 years. Like, think about that. Yep. Now we're used to seeing it every week because when you put on AEW Dynamite, you see that. But for a long time, we didn't have that. Nope. Even, you know, Impact Wrestling. Impact Wrestling was doing really good ratings on Spike, but they didn't draw more. I mean, I think their biggest house was about 7,000 people. So embrace it because even if it's not your favorite, watch it just to support it. Because like you said, I, I guarantee you the WWE is going to go back to that safe yes. place if they're winning. Competition. That's going to bring out the best in that company. And when, and when is the WWE best? Like you said, when it has competition. So for that reason alone, if you're a WWE fan, you want to support AEW. Title belts. Let me ask you about a title belt. Uh, the Fiend on WWE with his new $6,500 <laughs> title yeah. belt. Yeah. Do you... I guess maybe I'm a little bit more old school. I prefer to see the title come out and not the all the different titles, like the Stone Cold title, yeah, yeah. I all get those it. different things. To me, the NWA made a point when they came back. Their title meant something. It was history. There was legacy to that title. If you keep changing titles, does that hurt the title's prominence, I guess? Yeah, I, I think it definitely does. You're right. You know, We grew up with that 10 pounds of gold, that NWA World Heavyweight Championship, so that title meant everything. You're seeing that with Nick Aldis right now with the NWA, the way he holds that belt. He doesn't just sling it over his shoulder right. or just, you know, drag it on the ground. He, he wears it around his waist or he holds it like he's holding a porcelain doll. Um, I like that. I respect that. With the WWE, the titles don't mean as much. We, we know that. I mean, we've kind of become adjusted to that. Um, I, I, I still think that every story should lead to a championship. I think every championship should mean something. But again, I think it goes back to uh, the variety of wrestling that we're watching. You know, do you want the WWE to have that same respect for the title like the NWA? Maybe that would make it more like the NWA. So the fact that their titles are different and the standing is different, I think just just that's that product. But for me, yes, you're absolutely right. I wish they had a little bit more respect to their title holders. A new three-year contract with yes, Sirius three, XM. One, one, two, three, yes. So you got three more years. What are the plans in the next three years? To make this bigger and better. Um, I'm always, and I've, I've already got some things in the works that I think the fans will really enjoy. Um, I think we got a great cast, a great staff. I, I'm not looking to make any changes when it comes to that. I think Tommy, Mark, and Bully are fantastic oh, yeah. at what they do. But look, we made a change with now we are six days a week. Yep. We're not five days a week anymore. I never even expected that. I never even thought of that. Uh, and now we're on six days a week, and I'm not even involved in that Saturday. Do they show. come to you for that Saturday show to make sure you're okay with it? Well, yeah. I mean, I, I you know, Marissa Reeves, who's you know the head of the channel, uh, Fight Nation, of course. You know, when it comes to this show, she has the respect and knows how Good. important that it is. She would never do anything or make any kind of decisions that you know that she wouldn't at least you know get my okay or at least you know. 
talk to me about it. So I, you know, she's, that's why she's an amazing boss because she has the respect for me and the respect for the show. But you'll see, we're, you know, we're, we're coming up with things and coming up with ideas, especially, you know, our 10 year anniversary party was big. WrestleMania in Tampa, we're looking to make that party even bigger than our 10 year I was going to ask you about that. I'll be in Tampa, so I was hoping you're going to have an 11th anniversary party down there. Yeah, we got some plans. You Good. know, I can't tell you what it is, but we got some plans. Let's talk about some of the supporting players uh, on Busted Open. Uh, you got Alex and Gabby. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about each one of those two. First of all, I couldn't ask for a better cast around me. Uh, and one thing that was a mission for me is I wanted this to be like the Howard Stern Show. I want it to be like everyone who works on this show is a player and is a character and is a personality. Um, a lot of radio shows don't do that. Mm -hmm. They're behind the scenes. People are just that behind the scenes. I don't, I don't want that. And I don't think anybody else connected with the show wants that either. I want Alex Metz to be yep. known as the producer of the show because, you know, I want him to be acknowledged for it because he does a great job. Gabby um, is, does an, a tremendous job. And you know what? Alex is very good with his opinions. And Gabby, not a wrestling fan. She's new to the wrestling world. And I like the fact that she's growing with her knowledge of pro wrestling. I love that. I want people to understand that. And, you know, and anyway, look at what we're getting with Shelton Benjamin. Shelton yep. Benjamin comes on the air, proposes to Gabby. Why Shelton, not? Shelton, you're going to have to fight me for Gabby. I can tell you that good right luck, now. Good luck with that. <laughs> good luck with that. Uh, but... But that, that, they're very, very important to me and very important to the success of the show. Your family life. You've got kids, don't you? I mean, so you... I have a, I have a, a stepdaughter, Sarah, and I have my daughter, Abigail. So you stay pretty busy with the kids. Are they still teenage high school kids? Uh, yeah. Uh, Abigail, 16. She's in high school, which is tough. I feel tough. sorry for you. <laughs> Ooh, it's rough. And then my stepdaughter, Sarah, is actually in a trade school right now. She's in a broadcasting school oh, right really? now. So she's, she's, you know, she's finished with college. She's doing broadcasting school, and she's looking to get into this. So, you know, it's, it's I'm, you know, I, I don't want to be an influence, but at the same yep. time, why not be an oh, influence, yeah. you know? So uh, she's not a sports fan. She's not a wrestling fan. My daughter is a wrestling fan. She's a huge Marty Skrull fan. She, you know, she loves Crazy Steve. Like she's a she's a big time wrestling fan. So that's something that we, you know, we have a joy and a passion for, which is great. I also, uh, one last question. I know that you know Bill Apter. Uh, I love Bill Apter. Yeah. Tell me any stories about Bill Apter that you can remember. That yeah, I actually do have one. <laughs> Says you know, and I look at. Bill After now Bill After didn't know me when I started getting into radio or even when I started the show but I look at him as kind of a mentor. When I was a kid I I didn't want to be a pro wrestler. I wanted to be Bill After. Yep. I wanted to write for a wrestling magazine. That's what I would dream about. That's mm -hmm. what I what I really wanted to do. And I remember seeing him and uh George George Napolitano and you know taking pictures yep. outside the ring. And I I have like, you know, Polaroid pictures that I took of Bill After. As he's taking pictures oh, of wow. the act, because to me, like he was just as big a superstar as anybody that was in the ring wrestling. George too, what an amazing photographer, you know. So uh, uh, yeah, I I wanted to be Bill After, and I finally got to meet Bill After for the first time. It was WrestleMania 28 in Miami. And we actually, and Doug Mortman, who was my co-host at the time, was driving, and we gave him a ride from the stadium back to the hotel. And uh, my my broadcast partner Doug was driving like a maniac, and Bill After was just like, you know, hey, maybe you want to slow down, <laughs> uh, you know. So that that's probably like the you know, and just seeing Bill After like interact with like Road Warrior Animal, mm -hmm. and seeing as he should like getting that acknowledgement of being a legend in this business. So yeah, do you feel like he belongs in the Hall of Fame, Bill After? Absolutely. I, it's it's yeah. funny because I'm surprised he hasn't been put in there yet. And there's anybody from those days who knows the history of wrestling and has spoken with, talked with, whatever, with so many of the legends. I'm surprised he hasn't been entered yet. And he doesn't see himself going in. He doesn't think that'll ever happen. I think that's a shame. And, I think it is too. Um, you know, even like watching like those old, you know, the... Um, Lords of the Ring. I don't know if you remember that VHS tape. Yep. Like that was, you know, seeing Bill Apter with Gordon Soley. Like that just seemed natural to me. Yes. And as as important as any of those shows were, so were those magazines. You know, Pro Wrestling Illustrated, The Wrestler, Inside Wrestling, Sports Review Wrestling, all under that, you know, Apter Mag umbrella. Yes, and, and, and you know, I even look at George, you know, with Main Event Magazine and Wrestling. I, th those magazines were my childhood. You yes. know, those were. 
you know, those were how you found out everything that was going on in the world of wrestling. Because we didn't have the social media. No, we so, didn't have social I mean, media. Magazines and was they, it. They, didn't re- they didn't talk about it in any other magazine, uh, Sports as, Illustrated or anything like that. And in fact, the magazines were running stories that were well behind where they actually were because the magazines would get printed out. Like yep. about a month later, I guess it was, or something like that. So you never got up to the minute news like what we can do now. Now you can go on to Sirius XM and tune into you and get the information immediately. And that, and that's why wrestling right now is such an immediate, like, you, you know, the day after WrestleMania, you're not even talking about WrestleMania right. anymore. You're talking about the Raw that's taking place after WrestleMania. Those magazines documented everything, you know. I and I, I'm a big collector of wrestling magazines. Even yes. now, there's, there's still a couple of wrestling magazines that are surviving, um, and I subscribe to them because they still mean something to me. I have boxes and boxes of those old wrestling magazines. As a matter of fact, if you go into my bag right now, you'll 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 uh, I'll, 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 I'll make you go it up. up. <laughs> I'll open it up right in front of you because just to, just to to show you that I'm not bullshit. Well, I know if you had Tommy here today, you probably had to have a magazine with you. <laughs> well, I always do. Okay, there you go. I got wow. uh, Pro yeah. Wrestling Illustrated, you know, achievements from 1984. And I got, uh, I just mentioned it before, I got the wrestler, wrestler mag. I got, I carry these around, especially with knowing that Tommy's going to work with me. Every, he'll be disappointed if I don't bring him in. So every, every time I work with Tommy, I bring in a new magazine. Do you have a magazine cover that sticks out in your mind? One that you're like, oh, this is the, this is the one I, I'm going to put in a frame or something. You know? Yes. Uh, Sports Review Wrestling. Uh, the Last Battle of Atlanta. Tommy Rich yes. and, and Buzz Sawyer. My thanks to Dave LaGreca for taking the time to sit in front of our cameras and do this interview. I do want to mention, however, that I didn't stop the interview there. I've always believed that there are two sides to every person. The side that we see ourselves and how others see us. So with that in mind, I decided to ask the rest of the Busted Open crew, who is the real Dave LaGreca? And as you all know, I am um, married to Dave LaGreca, who is a host of Busted Open on Sirius XM. And let me tell you, it's crazy being to Dave LaGreca. I mean, basically everything that Dave does is wrestling related. Um, we actually got married in a wrestling ring and um, Dave is, I think somebody said that once about him and I think it can actually be, um, I, I'm pretty sure it's Peter Rosenberg who said that he's a um, wrestling historian. And I actually agree with that because he spent so much time um, watching wrestling, researching wrestling, talking about wrestling, taking wrestling related phone calls and um, basically his whole life is is wrestling. And I don't know if that's unfortunate or fortunate for me, but I just, um, I grew to love it. And the whole, you know, story, um, everything that's happening on the radio every day and how popular the show is, how crazy the show is, uh, how much of our, um, you know, own life story goes into that show. That's, that's just amazing. I never expected this in uh, my uh, most wild dreams to actually live through. Um, once in a while, he will do something nice for me. Like, for example, he will take me to some botanical gardens in Pennsylvania. And on the way there, we'll listen to, you know, all different wrestling podcast for two and a half hours and uh, on the way back we'll do the same thing while there he will take me to some Swiss restaurant for some fondue and probably on Valentine's Day he'll give me um, chocolate covered Ricolas as a gift but I just grew to love it um, we just we have so much fun like we're actually enjoying each other's company and um, you know, I enjoy going to all those crazy wrestling um, shows and signing chairs occasionally and signing autographs. I'm actually counting them. I think I'm at number 12 or 13 right now. That's how many I've signed. But living with Dave is exactly what you see on the radio. It's one crazy ride. What's going on, guys? I think y'all want to know who is the real Dave LaGreca. Dave fancies himself 
a smart man, a kind man, a sweet man. Bully Ray would paint Dave as somebody that won't make a decision. Well, Mark Henry, he describes Dave LaGreca as a fun loving junior high acting human being with a lot of love for pro wrestling. But in a nutshell, David LaGreca is the Gilbert Gottfried of pro wrestling. That, my friends, is who Dave LaGreca is. Who is the real Dave LaGreca? You see, on the air, you know him as this diehard wrestling fan. You know him as this loving husband and father. But we here at Busted Open know Dave as an egotistical. He always promotes his big heads. He always loves talking about himself. Hell, he's not even Italian. He's Swiss. Nobody knows the real Dave LaGreca. I know I got a bunch of people here. Maybe they, they know who he is. Uh, Dave? No. I, well, let's see if my company knows. Bill Mac wants a tape on who? Dave Lowe. I think one time I, I think that's some guy that I once busted open. Yeah, that's it. That Le Mac, Le, 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 what what name do you work under? I don't know who the hell he is. No, I don't. I don't know. Does he have uh, with his name? He has something maybe to do with uh, like Greco-Roman wrestling, lucha libre. I don't know. But what busted up on? No, I. I don't know who that. I. I have no idea who is that, Bill. Hey, come on, we gotta have dinner. To turn this freaking thing off. We don't know who this uh, Greg. 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 Who? Don't know who the hell he is, right? Cut this off. I want to go have dinner now, all right? I'm getting tired of this, all right? Hey, sorry, Mac. We, we, we're going to dinner. None of us can help you. We don't know who this Gregory guy is. La, is it Spanish, like food or something? La Grica? Or Greek food? or uh, I, we, we just don't have time to do this right now. Everybody's hungry. Come on, guys. All right, here we go. The Bully Ray top five power rankings when it comes to who is the real Dave LaGreca. Number five, the real Dave LaGreca is Swiss. He's a fraud. He's been saying he's Italian for the longest time, but he's not. He just did DNA test. He found out he's Swiss. You're Swiss? Oh my God, poor Violetta. She thought she was marrying a strong Italian man and she got you. Number four. Dave LeGrec is cheap. He self-admittedly suffers from lack of funza. Always looking for free stuff. Free t-shirts, free tickets, free everything. Number three. He's a hug chaser. Massive, massive hug chaser. Dave LaGreca loves everybody. Hey, Dave, what do you think of this person? Oh, I love them. What do you think of this person? I love them. Fraud. Stop chasing everybody's hug. It's okay to be hated every once in a while. Number two. He's a massive egomaniac. Always begging the nation to bring LaGreca heads to every AEW show, NXT show, WWE show, any show. Could be Joe's Backyard Wrestling Show. Dave just wants to see the Dave LaGreca head. And number one on my top five power rankings of who is the real Dave LaGreca? Dave's my boy. Best pro wrestling radio host out there. Boom, done, end of story. I have spoken. I can't believe I was just so nice to him on video. Oh, dear God, I'm going to run my face into a brick wall. Ugh.
You want to know who the real Dave LeGrec is? It's one word. Fraud. Ric Flair is his favorite wrestler? Come on. Why not just say Hogan? Why? I mean, what an obvious choice, Dave. And your favorite football team is the Dallas Cowboys? America's team? You're from New Jersey, Dave. You know, shadows in New York City. Have you ever been to Dallas? Have you ever even been to Texas? And nobody says Alice Cooper is their favorite artist. I mean, for crying out loud. He had like two songs. You want to know the real Dave LaGreca? Fraud. That's who he is. Wow. Thanks for watching. See you next time.